You know how much I love bridges, right? Yeah. But my one thing with the bridge is... It has to go somewhere. Very good. But I never <laughs> want you to know where it goes. You're paying attention. This is awesome. <laughs> People will sit for hours on end and feed their fish. Even a gardener won't sit for hours on end and watch their tulips grow. This one I think we did for around 70. Uh huh. That one over there was 45. That's a real nice sports car. Yeah. That's a Tesla. This is a Tesla backyard. It is an overcast day after monsoon rains last night in Prospect Heights, Illinois. I'm with Brian Helfrich, my top lieutenant in the local market, and we are at a very special water feature that we have not just done one giant water feature, but two at. We built the original water feature that you're about to see here in a couple seconds three years ago. Okay. Right, and we put an addition on earlier this spring. But what's exciting for me is to come back and see how everything's working after such a huge Monsoon rainfall. rains last night. So check this out. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. All about living the Aquascape lifestyle. And this is the lifestyle. And here we have it. The rainwater harvesting system filled up all the way with all that rain, right Brian? Yeah, what you're looking at is the top of a 3,000 gallon tank. Wow. Right, so we built these stairs because they have family and, and their family has a lot of kids and stuff. So this is an easy way for them to kind of come down in yeah. here and splash around. We even put this uh, bubbling rock in that they turn on yeah. every now and then just for the kids to play. But it's what, just so inviting. Yeah. And that waterfall, like super simple, but nice and wide. And I'll always remember because I remember that rock. Like look that at how is, awesome. That is the coolest stone, that limestone with all the unique properties to it. So they've got aqua blocks in here, snorkel, centipede, and this is basically part of the filtration system for this pond. Yeah, so we collect water off the roof. It comes down and through here, through our first flush and everything else. Yeah. Filters out shingle dust, helicopter seeds, and it's flooded right now, but it never gets higher than this because an overflow is set yep. from this height. So over. it'll either be just gravel or six inches of water. Exactly. And this is one of your favorite things to talk about. That waterfall, I'm gonna guess, is between eight and 10 inches high. Eight to 10 inches high, and, and we kind of you know sunk this down to pull it off, but it was so important to have a waterfall there because right over here is their family room. Oh yeah. You know, it's our, more mm -hmm. of like a four season room. Yeah. But they sit in there all the time and the view from in there with all the windows, this had to happen right here. I love the moss, I love the plant, and they're gardeners. And whenever we build a water feature for a gardener, and look at it, like the attention to detail, right? He's got the junipers, but he's got a bunch of unique conifers all over the place. And this one's really cool as it jets out over the water. Wow. Like imagine what that's gonna look like five years from now as it continues to come it's out over everything. So you see the big waterfalls over here and it pulls you into this space to discover, oh my gosh, like look at the fish and everything else. Everything looks like it's been here forever and it's only three years old. Yeah. So one of the fun things with this project, right? Yeah. They had met with multiple contractors to come out here and they were gonna put a little pond outside this window over here. They were gonna do this, they were gonna do that. And the other um, architects or landscape designers they were working with were missing the big picture. I remember they wanted, this. They yeah. wanted more water. So we came up with this design with a stream kind of coming. It was all supposed to be just a stream, really? right? A long meandering stream that came through here. And really this big pavilion yep. was to go on the other side. The day of it was like, well, let's switch it, uh -huh. right? And so Rob said, I think I want the pavilion over here rather than over so there. So smart. So we redesigned everything really quick. And this is why we shouldn't do drawings, right? Because yes. they don't matter all the time. But with a can of paint, we yep. really just figured it out again. And this is what we created. Wait a minute. When we actually started building, we weren't even gonna work and have a pond? It was just to be a stream. It was just supposed <laughs> to be a meandering stream. We were gonna do like a 10 to 12 inch deep pool in here so children could get in. It kind of slowed the stream down a little bit. As we were in the machine, I said, Rob, you sure you don't want a pond? Because all it is is a couple more scoops, uh -huh. right? And so we dug out a little bit more. And now, of course, beautiful they koi. Get into the fish. They've got golden orphs in here. I see you've got a fish cave in here. 
And these fish just make it. Not only did we do this, but you designed a whole new water feature that you haven't even shown me yet. Yeah. When did you finish it? Like a couple weeks ago? About yeah. a month ago. Right? I have not seen it. So tell us about the design process of how this goes. So, so much of our inspiration comes from nature. And so when he said he wanted a stream system, when I think of streams, it's really important to let the water erode away that earth, right? And so when I Exposing think- Exposing the stones. Never ever have I seen a stream where the water depth is consistent throughout the whole thing. Varies. And so areas like having this deep pool here, you yeah. would actually see in a stream. So even though we would call that a pond, this is still very much of a stream system yes. with fish in it. And so from when you look at from here, it's stream and waterfalls, stream, stream, stream. This is what we call a deep stream. Yes. Where fish can actually swim. And, and of course, koi love flowing water because they're river fish. One of the things I want to point out here is you don't know where the water ends and the land begins because of the landscaping. And I love the hardscape patio coming right up off of the gazebo next to it. Between the aquatic plants, terrestrial plants, and the hardscaping, it all blends together very, very beautifully. This is about as exquisite of a landscape pond combination that I've basically seen and it's a three-year-old water feature. And the homeowner did it. Like I would actually hire him to come to my yard That's and say, talent. hey, what would you do different in my yard for yeah. the plants? Cause he's got an eye for this. We love when we have gardeners that love on our water features cause they make them look that much better. And look at this waterfalls, unbelievable. So one of the greatest joys about having a pond is your koi and feeding them. And so here's some beautiful fish that they have here. And if you look at this right now, obviously the water's crystal clear and you can get problems with predation. You never know with a pond. You could have years, no problem. And all of a sudden a heron finds it one day. So one of the things that we like to say is if you look down here right now, you can see all these beautiful koi. Watch what happens when we put in our bubble screen. So we're gonna turn on our underwater and here it comes right here. Watch how this changes the perspective. So a koi or a heron would have a lot less visibility of the fish just by simply adding an aeration system. An aeration system is healthy for the whole pond, but it's even better for the fish because a heron will be less apt to get your fish if you have something like this. And when I'm out here feeding them, I just unplug it. And when we leave, we just plug it back in. So not only is it adding supplemental aeration, but it hides the fish from predators. Look at how the path winds, right? It twists and turns, and so it's so much fun when the customer gives us your know, free reign to do whatever we want. So we designed this pathway, and now you get back here and wait till you see what you discover. Now, this is your first time seeing this. So it went to a wow. fire pit, but he said, Brian, I think I want to see a little wow. bit more. Wow, look at this. Oh, that rock, that stone that you Look used. at the size of it. Here's a brand new, I've never seen it before. So it's a pondless waterfall? It's a pondless waterfall with a dry stream bed, with about a 90 foot dry stream bed that runs through. Nine, 10 rocks. Huge rocks, yeah. enormous rocks. Your viewers yeah. are gonna get to see what a naked water feature looks like versus a dressed up water feature. Right, this is a Christmas tree without decorations. Because of the elevation off the backside of the berm, we get this sunken feeling back in here and we added that to build it up more, which really makes it feel sunken. So you are in this really intimate space as these pine trees and stuff continue oh, to grow. And I love this, check is, out this. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> He's actually got a US Forest Service sign back here. He's got this one over here. This is so much fun too. Customers adding their own touches. Yes. This was put in not only to give them something to look at, but solve a problem, which is the dry stream bed. So when it would rain, like it did last night, yeah. this is actually running. The neighbor's property, the neighbor's oh, neighbor's wow. property all runs through here. Which is why the water is looking a little bit cloudy right now because this got filled up with yep. two inches of rain that came last. Mother Nature fills up the reservoir for us. It overflows and then off it goes down yeah. the pathway yeah, I wanted to. Absolutely. Look at that rock. Oh my gosh. Look at this rock behind you. <laughs> all of this limestone comes from the Ozarks. We don't use a single native rock when we build ponds in Illinois because it's all ugly. This stuff mm -hmm. is beautiful from the Ozarks with moss and lichens on them.
I'm sitting in a pond that's about three years old and what I want to talk to you guys about is a little bit of different edge techniques in rock placement. You can see on a big project like this we love to use large boulders. In fact I'm sitting on a rock that probably weighs about 1500 pounds, 1000 pounds. Next to me is a rock that probably weighs 800, 900 pounds. So I love using these large rocks but large rock only looks large if there's small rock next to it. And so next to it over in here, you can see some different small rock. Right in here, there was some small rock and it's so important to break up the monotony. When we want it finished right, I want the customer or the landscaper to landscape it in a way where I can't tell exactly where the water ends and where the land begins. If I have big rock like this, it's impossible to hide it. So the goal is to make it look like this rock kind of peeks out amongst the plants. The reason we have some small rock back in here is to give them some opportunities to put aquatic plants and let the terrestrial plants grow up over those small rocks where a plant like this would never be able to engulf a big rock like this. So here you can see where we have tons of small rock down into here. It was a much different look three years ago when we finished. Big rock, a bunch of small rock on a curve that goes away from the pond, and then some big rocks again. So almost every single time we build a pond, big rocks are going on peninsulas, the curves that go towards the pond, small rock goes on the curves that go away from the pond, with the idea that the plants are eventually gonna hide all of that small rock. Hopefully that gives you guys a couple design ideas and different edge techniques and how to actually make a pond look more natural. So we continued that meandering path, no different than they had over in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So twist turn, a strategic plant here will hide what you're about to see out here, which is really just more of their yard. And this leads you to another bridge, which takes you back over the dry stream bed and kind of takes you on a full journey across the pond. How does this work? So this will allow water to then slowly percolate back down into the ground. You have the snorkel and the centipede just right up there. Mm -hmm. So this is just this water is that came in last night. Yeah, the idea is to slow that water down a little so bit. So you have aqua blocks underneath there? No, just, so fabric. It's just fabric. So water will slowly percolate back down into the ground. The idea of it sitting here for a little bit It'll stay here for about a day, day and a half, right? So it's not a mosquito ridden thing or anything. But the only permanent water is that maybe a 10 foot by 10 foot area over yeah. there. If we didn't have this here, mm -hmm. water was rushing so fast and eroding away everything back over here. It's almost like creating a dam, slowing the water down and then letting it percolate back down into the soil. How do you go about pricing something like this? I look at it and I can easily calculate how much stone I need mm -hmm. based off of square footage. And then I can also look at it because I've been doing it for a while. I think we can get this part done in one day, this part done in two days, so this more, part done yeah. in three days. So, this part. So then I can throw labor towards it. The hardest part is figuring out how much stone, Yeah. right? But really just with some simple formulas and equations, you can calculate that stuff. What was this one and what was that one? An investment like this, which is a huge feature, 16 by 30 foot pond here yeah. with you know some meandering streams. You have a rainwater harvesting system, some large waterfalls, lots of customized stonework, jets, aeration, fish caves. This one I think we did for around 70. Uh -huh. That one over there was 45. Hey Brian, thanks a lot for this tour. Just spectacular. If you like to see Brian's work, follow along on this vlog, like, comment, and share it. Tell us what your favorite part of this water feature is. I love the fact that you have a one that you just finished that's not landscape yet so people could see what it looks like when we leave. Next year, we'll be able to come back here, videotape this again, and show your viewers what that looks like. Absolutely. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow along. I love my job. <laughs>